Hi boys and girls, you made it to the end of the week. Um, we're going to be starting section 4-5 today. I'm going to break it up into two parts because I thought there was too much stuff in it to make it one thing. So we're going to have part A and part B on 4-5. This is all about slope intercept form. Okay, and we're going to get started here. I'll try not to make this video too long. Um, section 4-5, slope intercept form your I can statement, your vocabulary, but before we really get started in this unit, I want to talk about slope intercept form and how it came about. So let's look at that here first. Okay, and you might have noticed suddenly page 225 has appeared. <laughs> That's because I forgot to put page numbers on it. So start at 225 and follow along. I'll tell you when we turn the page. All right, but for now we're on page 225. And then suddenly we're not in the book at all. Okay, um, I want to show you where slope intercept form comes from. Okay, here's an, an equation of a linear, it's a linear equation. And back in seventh grade, they used to tell you to make an XY table and make some points and plot them and draw the line. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. Okay, I'm going to try to do this quickly because I don't want to bore you to death. Uh, it is the last day of your week, and I know you probably don't have a whole lot of attention span left. All right, so for the first one here, what we do is we take the x values and we substitute them here for the x variable, and then we solve the equation. What this would look like for this first one, we would have y equals 2, and then we put 0 in where the x was, and then minus 1. Well, 2 times 0 is going to be 0. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have y equals negative 1. Okay, you would do it for the next value too. You would have 2 times the next x value, which is 1, minus 1. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, and it's supposed to be minus 1. Minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so this would be 1. Next one, you would have y equals 2 times 2, minus 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 gives us 6 minus 1, which gives us 5. And by now you might have started to notice there's a pattern. This is going up by 2 each time. Once you realize there's a pattern, go ahead and finish it. Okay. Now if you went over here and graphed these points, I don't think we can graph all of them on this little graph, but we'll try. 0, negative 1 would be here. The first Point of the, the first point tells you which way to go on the x, so that's right or left. The second one tells you to go up or down. This point was 0, negative 1, so that means don't go left or right at all, but go down 1. This next point is point 1, 1, so you start here, you go right 1, up 1. This point is 2, 3, so you go right 2 and you go up 3. Okay. Uh, 3, 5, you would go right 3, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I think we've reached as much as we could possibly do on this graph. Um, but here, here is me trying to draw a straight line on a graphic drawing tablet, and easier said than done. Oh, that's nasty looking. Okay, so um, here we have this line, all right? Let me ask you two questions about it. First of all, what's the slope of this line? Well, how do we find slope? We go from a left point to a right point. All right, first thing we do is up or down. So this would be up two. So up two, and then right one. So the slope of this line simplifies to two. What's the y-intercept of this line? Where does this line cross the y-axis? This is the y-axis. At what number does it hit this axis? Well, if this is zero, wouldn't this be negative one? So the y-intercept is negative 1. Look at the original equation. The original equation was y equals 2x minus 1. Do you see a positive 2 and a negative 1 in that equation? You do. The number in front of the x is a positive 2. And this number is a negative 1. That is why we call this slope-intercept form. Because when you write the equation in this form, the number in front of the x is always your slope, and the number at the end is always your y-intercept. Pretty cool, right? I know you're excited about that. Let's uh, do this again. Okay, here we have a new mm -hmm. equation. 
Um, if you substitute zero here, I'm not going to write each one of these. I'm going to bore you to death here. You would have negative three times zero plus two. Well, that would be zero, so y is positive two. Okay. If you put a one here, you would have negative three plus two, so one would be negative one. If you put a two here, you would have negative six plus two would be negative four. If you put a three here, you would have negative nine plus two is going to be negative seven. See, this is going down by three each time, down by three, down by three, down by three, uh, down by three. We aren't going to be able to graph those anyway. We go over here to graph it. Zero, positive two. That's right here. Uh, one, negative one would be right here. Two, negative four. One, two, three, four would be here. And I guess I'll go ahead and try to draw this line. Ew, 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 ew. That's so gross. I do this way better on the whiteboard. Okay, so what is the slope of this line? Well, traveling from this point to this point, we would have to go down one, two, three, down three, and write one. So the slope of this line is negative three. Ah, notice that. Mm -hmm. What's the y-intercept of this line? Right here, that's our y-intercept. This would be zero, one, two. So our y-intercept is positive two. Here's our positive two. Mm -hmm. So this is not a coincidence. This is exactly how it's supposed to work out each time. Now, I have these two here because I quickly want to graph them the old-fashioned way and show you what's going to happen. How are these two equations different from each other? Well, the only difference is this one has a plus 2 for a y-intercept, and this one doesn't have a y-intercept. So what would this one look like? You're going to multiply each of these numbers by negative 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We can stop there. This one will start here at 0, 0, and then we have 1, negative 2, and then we have 2, negative 4, 2, 3, 4, right? And so we would have this line, hmm, oh boy, yeah, there we go, this really bad line, okay? So now let's go over here to this one. We're going to multiply x with negative 2, but then we're going to add 2 to it. So negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. I think we'll quit there. That's enough. Let's graph this one. 0, 2 is right here. 1, 0 is right here, 2, negative 2 is right here, and 3, negative 4 is right here. Now, what you should notice about these lines, if they were lines at all, is first of all, they're parallel, okay? Parallel lines have the same slope. Don't these both have the same slope? Yes, they do. But notice that the green one is higher than the red one. It's higher by 2. Its y-intercept is positive 2. And what's the y-intercept of this one? The y-intercept of this one is 0. We don't write plus 0. So that's why it didn't seem to have one. If it doesn't seem to have a y-intercept, it's 0. Okay. So here's where we are. We know that in slope-intercept form, x and y represent any of the xy points on the line, but m is the slope. Oh, that's a bad color. I'm going to have to change that. m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Mm -hmm. okay. So, moving on. All right, so this is in your book, and this would be on page 225. Okay. Um, we're going to look at part of this, and we're not going to look at other parts of this because some of it is just ridiculously complicated. Um, over here, they tell you exactly what I just told you. When you write a linear equation in this format with y all by itself on the left, an equal sign, 
some number in front of the x, and then plus or minus some random number. That's called slope-intercept form. The number in front of the x is always your slope, and the plus or minus number over here is always your y-intercept. Okay, over here, they want us to derive the formula. Oh yeah, not today, Satan, not today. This would be on page 226. Page 226, okay? Um, all they're doing in these first examples is they're giving you an equation in slope-intercept form and asking you, and don't even look at this because they have way complicated that crap. Don't even look at it. They're asking you to find the slope and the y-intercept, okay? The slope is two-thirds. And the y-intercept, if it's minus 4, it's negative 4. If it's plus 4, it's positive 4. Floor, four. <laughs> so this one, because it's minus 4, it's negative 4. Right? All right, and here's your check. What's the slope of this one? The slope is the number in front of the x, negative 2 fifths. What is your y-intercept? Your y-intercept is negative 1. And silly McGraw-Hill, they thought that was enough examples for you. <laughs> They're so funny. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's some more examples. Slope of this one is negative 9. The y-intercept is positive 4. The slope of this one is negative 6 fifths. The y-intercept is negative 3. See, minus 3, negative 3. The slope of this one is negative 4 fifths. The y-intercept is positive 1. The slope of this one is 5. What's the y-intercept of this one? 0. Now that's enough examples. The other kind of problem we're going to do in part A is they're going to give you the slope and the y-intercept and ask you to write the equation. All right, here's your slope, negative 3, and here's your y-intercept, negative 4. So you write y equals, and then the next number is your slope, so that's negative 3, and then you always put an x with it, and then the y-intercept is all that's left, minus 4. Okay. Don't pay me too much all that gobbledygook. It's too much trouble. So they're giving us a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of negative 7. So we write y equals, it's slope time, slope goes there, x, and then the y-intercept is minus 7. They thought that was enough examples. <laughs> they're so funny, these reveal people. Um, okay, so we would have y equals, the slope is 3, so you go 3x, the y-intercept is 4, and it's positive, so we put plus 4. Here. We have y equals, we write the slope, 1 half x, and the y-intercept, minus 1. Oh, here's a tricky one. The slope is 0, so we would have 0x, and y-intercept is plus 12. What happens when you multiply a number times 0? That's right, you get 0. This equation is y equals 12. Well, what, do, what kind of line has a zero slope? Remember slope, dude? This is zero fun. This is zero fun. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. This is a horizontal line at y equals 12. That's why there's no x term, because the slope was zero. It's an oddity, but I thought I'd throw it in there. And over here, we have the slope is negative 4, so we write y equals negative 4x, and the y-intercept is minus 6. So, in your McGraw-Hill, there are going to be two kinds of uh, questions. One question will give you the equation and ask you for the slope and the y-intercept. Be careful of your signs. And then the second kind of question will give you the slope and the y-intercept and ask you to write the equation. And just like in direct variation, you're going to have to write the whole equation. You've got to write the y equals slope number x and then plus or minus your y-intercept. That's the kind of questions that are going to be waiting for you on tomorrow's practice assignment. And in the meantime, your secret word is right there. I can't say it out loud because my study hall's in here and they would hear it and then they wouldn't watch the video. So I can't say it out loud, but that is your secret word. <laughs> uh, they thought they were going to get a freebie. Okay. Well, you guys have a great time today. I will see you in class.